Most video games try to ease players in, introducing them slowly to the world through means of tutorials or gentler, easier first levels that allow them to get accustomed to the controls. Not these seven games, which were all super keen to kill you the second you got started. I Wanna Be The Guy Gaiden is an indie freeware platform game that is probably best known for being brutally, unflinchingly difficult. Well, that and the fact that it's basically copyright infringement, the game. Even with that fearsome reputation in mind, however, you'd think that the game would at least wait until you'd started playing properly before horribly murdering you. But get ready for a shocking twist, friends, because guess what? It doesn't. Yes, I Wanna Be The Guy Gaiden is so keen to kill you that it does it on the overworld map before you've even selected a level. Still, that's a one-off, and now that you know it's there, you can avoid that fish and move on to... Okay, but avoid that, and we can finally... Okay, I think we're done here. Fun game, had a good time. Those who played 1991's Another World will remember it as a beautiful, thoughtful, visionary game that was years ahead of its time. They will also remember it as the game which begins with you accidentally teleporting your desk into a well. As if that wasn't bad enough, you have approximately one and a half seconds on this extremely dark and hard to read screen to realize that the intro cutscene is over before a collection of unpleasant looking tentacles snake up towards you from the bottom of the screen and then drag you into the murky depths where, presumably, they aren't going to make you a cup of tea and offer you a selection of nice cakes. Still manage to avoid that fate, and you make it out of the pool and are then free to take a moment to appreciate the beautiful sci-fi landscape that you find yourself in. Come on, another world, work with me here. The Consuming Shadow is a procedural survival horror game with a heavy debt to HP Lovecraft, and you know what that means when it comes to video games? Sanity Meter. Taking damage, casting spells, and leaving enemies alive all reduce your overall sanity level, leading to some interesting slash upsetting effects, such as static on the screen, messed up controls, and occasionally in-game options turning into Kill Myself, which triggers a minigame in which you desperately try to not blow your own head off. Of course, you don't actually have to wait until your sanity deteriorates for this to happen. It's also an option right there on the title screen, nestled snugly alongside Begin Game. Perhaps you're imagining that that's just there as a warning of the kind of trials you'll face ahead, to which I say, go ahead, give it a click, see what happens. So that's the game killing you off on the actual title screen. I think we have a new record. Speaking of legendarily hard games, the 1984 text adventure based on Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books had a bit where if you couldn't figure out the incredibly convoluted method by which you could get a universal translator fish out of a vending machine in five turns, the game became unwinnable. It was such a hard, unfair jerk of a puzzle that the publisher even started selling t-shirts which read, I got the Babel fish, which was pretty presumptuous considering that a lot of people had a hard time even making it off Earth at the start of the game. That's because you begin the game hungover and have approximately 10 turns before your house is bulldozed with you inside it. Of course, the game doesn't tell you this, and as such, you might not be grasped with the correct sense of urgency, preferring instead to take the long-awaited opportunity to explore one of literature's most fondly regarded worlds. Well, too bad. Enjoy getting bulldozed. For future reference, I think maybe a better motto might be do panic, guys.
Uninvited is a spooky adventure game in which you, having crashed your car, have to search a haunted mansion looking for your lost sister and avoiding murdery ghosts. If you could manage to avoid dying in any one of a number of stupid ways, that is, ranging from eating random fruit, to climbing into a coffin, to, ooh, I wonder what happens if I use axe on self. Well, I don't know what I expected. It's a game that wants you dead, is what I'm saying, and nowhere is that more obvious than right at the very start of the game, where you have approximately six seconds to escape from your crashed car before it catches fire and explodes, killing you. At least let me figure out the buttons, uninvited. I don't need long, it's the NES, there are only two. Whoa, tell her! Suddenly I'm starting to feel a, a little festive, like I want to see a bad clown actor kick up some musty old carnival sawdust. That can only mean one thing. Popcorn's a-poppin'! <laughs> what do you say, Teller? Carnival time? Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors was an ultimately unreleased collection of minigames and magic tricks starring the titular magicians, that is most famous for the inclusion of Desert Bus, a postmodern exercise in extreme realism and extreme boredom. But it also included a combination platformer beat em up RPG called Smoke and Mirrors, in which Penn and Teller try to expose a thinly veiled version of rival magicians Siegfried and Roy as being frauds. In the words of Stinkbomb and Rot, magic is all around us, only we can show you that it is real. Its time has come. Nah. Anyway, Smoke and Mirrors had two difficulty settings normal and impossible. Normal was what you'd expect, but in impossible mode, you get to watch a non-interactive scene of Penn and Teller walking down a street for 30 seconds before they get killed by aging rock star Lou Reed with the laser eyes that he apparently has. Hey Teller, it's Lou Reed, the original rock and roll animal himself. Lou, how you doing, man? Reed then goes on to explain what impossible means. This is the impossible level, boys. Impossible doesn't mean very difficult. Very difficult is winning the Nobel Prize. Impossible is eating the sun. Just saying, there's probably a reason this was never released. Hey guys, have you heard about this game Dark Souls? Apparently, it's quite hard. That being said, Dark Souls has never tried to hide how hard it is, something that becomes quickly apparent the very first time you play it. Indeed, within a minute of booting up Dark Souls for the first time, you are faced with the Asylum Demon before you've really had a chance to figure out where you are, or what's going on, or, you know, the controls. Oh, and also you don't have a weapon beyond a broken rubbish sword and no Estus flasks. Really, what you're supposed to do is leg it and then come back later with a weapon and show the Asylum Demon who's boss. But if you're a new player, whose only exposure to Dark Souls is people on the internet telling you how hard it is, you could be forgiven for thinking you're supposed to stand your ground and poke this hulking behemoth to death. Spoiler alert, it's a bad idea. As a manifesto for Dark Souls though, it's pretty spot on. Get used to seeing this screen a lot, guys. There you have it, some of the times games really, really wanted to kill us right off the bat. Any other favourite examples we missed? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!